The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome to the lowdown on Ryan Hedges. Yes, that's right. This is where we get a fan of the club that he's been transferred from um, to tell us exactly how good he is. And I'm sure that Glenn uh, here will, will tell us um, a little bit about Ryan Hedges and hopefully give us some positives, but also tell us what to watch out for, I guess, in terms of his performances, how he's done for Aberdeen in the Premiership over the last couple of seasons. But first of all, Glenn, how are you doing? Um, how's, how's the storms been up there? Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much for for having me on. Yeah, I'm doing doing well now that powers powers restored. Um, hopefully not losing it again over uh the next couple of days when I think the next storm's due. But uh, hoping to get to some more football after our game was postponed this weekend, so didn't get a chance to give Ryan Hedges his farewell. No, um, and I'm sure that you're very disappointed about that. Let's go straight into talking about Ryan then. Let's not beat around the bush. Um, he came to you guys from Barnsley. Um, obviously, he's not a Scott. Scott is he's, he's a Welsh international, but he's not even Welsh. He's born in Northampton, I believe. So um, he's certainly one that's travelled around the UK. Um, what was your kind of, was there any excitement when he was signed? Was there any expectation on Ryan Hedges and how did he perform to that expectation to start with? Um, I think it was a bit of an unknown quantity when he signed. Obviously, you hear you're signing an international player, or you know, I don't. He's, I don't actually think he's had much international involvement since his during his time at Aberdeen, anyway. But you know, he came with a, a decent track record at Barnsley. But you know, Aberdeen are probably similar to a lot of football fans down south, quite fickle and maybe a bit judgmental if someone's not got the the brightest record uh, in the book. So. But, you know, Ryan hit the ground very much running in his time in Aberdeen. He scored the winner uh, against Hearts on his debut. It was a 3-2, uh, ended up being a 3-2 win for Aberdeen. So that, you know, endears, endears a player straight to the, the faithful when you bag a winner against a team that we consider very much a, a near rival uh, in, the, in that season. And look, Ryan's gone on to score uh, 18 goals. It might not sound a lot over the, the two and a half seasons he's had in Aberdeen, but he's also contributed 17 assists in that time, has had a little bit of injury problems, but in general, he always offers something in the game. There is a spark that he could provide at some point when the game may be finally in the balance. And I think certainly in that first season, he did offer that. We probably saw more from him in, in his second season. I know a bit, bit more injuries uh, affected him in that season, but yeah, I think I'm, I'm really intrigued to see how he gets on back down, back back down south. I think what we need to find out about him is exactly what his role is going to be in the Blackburn Rovers team and and where he's going to be positioned. Um, in terms of how he was used at Aberdeen, what what kind of position was he taking up and and how did he perform there? It primarily, he's a, a right winger. Um, during his time in Aberdeen. Uh, he's very much left-footed, uh, albeit he did score and, and grab an assist in the in the recent Scottish Cup game against Edinburgh City with his uh, right foot, which was very much a surprise to, to most of us. So, yeah, I think you'll you'll see um, he'll be suited more to, to playing on the right. He likes to cut inside uh, and have a shot from distance on his left or, or thread that pass through to the striker on his left-hand side. Similar, if he gets to the byline, expect him to, to cut the ball back onto his left foot before providing the cross. We did see him as well play on the left, but you know, not anywhere near as effective, in, in certainly in Aberdeen's team, on the left-hand side. Uh, and he had spells as well in, his, in attacking midfield or in behind the striker when we were struggling uh, for goals at times last season. We were kind of chopping and changing our, our tactics. But again, it's not really a role that suited Ryan. He likes taking the, the full back or the, the left back on, trying to beat his man and uh, show that little bit of skill and pace that he's got in his locker. Okay, so there is a bit of skill and pace in there. And obviously, mm -hmm. he's over six foot tall as well. Yeah. So has he been able to impose himself physically as well? I think it's different. I think all Scottish football and English football, uh, kind of different in terms of 
the physicality of the of the two leagues. I think Scotch Rules is a lot quicker, um, uh, but can be rough and tumble. Uh, Ryan's coped well with that, um, albeit as I said last season he did pick up a, a hamstring injury that ruled him out for a while, and he also picked up a really strange injury um, where he pulled his pectoral muscle that saw him out for nearly two months um, in a kind of it was kind of a rugby tackle in it in one of the games. So he did struggle for form after that. But yeah, I, I mean, apart from that, you do see him. He's not, he won't shirk out a t- a, of a tackle and he's not afraid to take on his man, which I think, you know, Rovers fans will certainly warm to. Yeah, it's good. You can certainly see with the Blackburn Rovers recruitment in that forward area that they seem to do concentrate on players who have that little bit of being able to carry the ball, um, have a bit of pace about them, but also sometimes have that physicality about them. Ben Brereton Diaz is the archetypal example of the type of forward that I'm thinking of. Um, I wonder if they would link up well, because obviously um, we're recording this after the Luton game. And I was just talking to you before we started recording, we ended up with Daniel Ayala and Dan Butterworth up front. Um which, you know, isn't ideal. I think most people can agree, especially if you're, you know, chasing the automatic promotion places in the championship. So um, there's been a lot of to do around getting this deal done in, in winter rather than initially it was it was mooted that it was going to be a summer thing, a pre-contract agreement. Mm-hmm. Um, what's been the information that you've been getting from the Aberdeen side as to what's happening with Ryan in terms of whether he was going to come in the winter or in the summer? Um, I think from our, our side, you know, purely being selfish, um, we'd have liked obviously the money for Ryan, which I think, I think you know, it's been an undisclosed fee, but the the talk we've heard up here is it's around two hundred to two hundred twenty five thousand pounds that Blackburn have, Blackburn have paid for his services. I know you guys were um, reported to offer four hundred thousand last summer, which Aberdeen knocked back. Um, as the window kind of went on this month, I was almost expecting him to stay. Um, but I think Aberdeen just couldn't turn down that sort of money for a player that they would lose for nothing um, in five, six months' time. And I think, you know, for Ryan as well, we've probably, although he's still, you know, in, in our last four games, he's got two goals and an assist. Obviously, we had the, the winter break in between um, one of those games. He hasn't really kind of had his head turned and he's obviously still you know put in fully committed performances sometimes you see when players are maybe rumored to be going elsewhere in the window they'll not you know be full-blooded into tackles kind of protecting themselves for a move he did he did hobble off in our last game away to St Mirren he came off just after the hour mark but you know it can't have been a serious injury if it you know he's passed his medical and and everything's done down down in Blackburn. Uh, you know I do probably fully expect him to be involved if, if Tony Mowbray sees fit and um, when you guys play Swansea next weekend. Yeah, you mentioned there about him giving hundred percent and stuff like that. How has he left it on terms with the Aberdeen fans? What's the kind of overall impression that the fans kind of have with him leaving now? I think, you know, I think, you know, he goes with a lot of well wishes from the club. You know, he's he's got his money coming into the club. He hasn't, you know, done us a dirty and said, oh, I'm not, I'm going to sign a new contract. And then, you know, a couple of days later, he signs a pre-contract with yourselves or another club. Um, and, you know, he's provided good times with us. You know, uh, last season he scored a, a second half hat trick. He only played the second half. Okay, it was against Faroese opposition. He also scored direct from a corner as well. In the Europa League, I'm sure those will be, forming part of highlight reels that Rover fans are sharing wildly in the, in the coming week of some of the, the goals that he's had. But, you know, he's provided lots of good times for Aberdeen fans over, over recent years and, and months as well. OK, it's interesting the, the type of responses that you kind of see on Twitter. You do get the mm. extremes on there. I, I understand yeah. that. Um, you, we are seeing a lot of um, Aberdeen fans and also, you know, fans of Scottish football in general just saying, that he's not very good. Basically, mm. that there's um, there's definitely some sections of the support which say good kind of good riddance. Um, can you see where those people are coming from? Yeah, slightly. Um, I think it's possibly down to the fact of, as I said earlier, about how one-footed Ryan can be. Um, there's a tendency to be that, and it's possibly down to Aberdeen in general last season, more so. Um, that Ryan was our biggest creative spark last season. We, we did end up going a, a spell, I think it was 10 or 11 games where we didn't actually score. Um, 
and you know a lot of people put pressure on Ryan Hedges to be that person to, to create chances so when teams you know could mark Ryan out a game or could keep him quiet it kept Aberdeen as a whole quiet and that you know either people reflect that badly on Ryan as being someone that's not overly influential or it's maybe down to Aberdeen as a whole as we didn't have another option that could distract defenders elsewhere and allow Ryan the, the, the space and, and time to, you know, influence a game. You know, I do think Aberdeen will maybe, if we don't replace him well, we've obviously signed a, a young Dutchman from Ado Den Haag recently that a lot of us have seen. Well, certainly we did on our podcast. We saw that as a, a direct replacement for, for Ryan Hedges. But I think, you know, maybe come, you know, February, March time, we might, probably fully appreciate how much we are going to miss Ryan Hedges. Yeah, that's interesting. From our discussion and things that I've seen about him as well, I wonder if he's one of those that if he is your main spark or someone that is you're going to run your attacks through, that he's actually quite easy to shut down mm-hmm. in that he can be quite predictable with him being so one-footed and yeah. wanting to have those. I know Arjen Robin had the same trick of cutting inside yeah. and bending one yeah. in, but he was a lot more difficult to stop, I imagine, than Ryan Hedges. So um, it'd be interesting to see what, tactically is done against him when he plays for Blackburn and whether we find that he's kind of easy to shut down as well. Um, Just going up back to whether you think he might be a success in the championship, um, what's your kind of general impression in terms of um, if you think he's going to provide the, the, Maybe not, I don't think he's going to be our, our key attacker. You know, obviously mm. we've got Ben Riverton Diaz, Sam Gallagher. We've got some other players in and around the the first team that are of different options. So he's not going to come in and be the main man. But mm-hmm. do you think he can provide something? You know, goals and assists when he does play. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I can. You know, as I said, he's got that pace. He's got that vision. Sometimes with the the ball, I don't know if you know maybe some of the the folk tuning into this this episode will have seen the the Rangers game recently. Obviously, that was on Sky Television. The the pace he showed to get in behind, and you know we never got the penalty when Alan McGregor clattered into him. So he does have that kind of determination. Again, that was another thing. You know, there was maybe that thought: will he back out that challenge because he could have got himself seriously injured, which would have you know jeopardised any sort of move, but. You know, he's full-blooded in that sort of sense. Um, you know, we obviously played Burnley a few years ago. Ryan wasn't in the squad at that time, but we ran Burnley very close. I know they're very, well, not very well thought of down, down your neck of the woods, but, you know, if a squad without Ryan Hedges can run them pretty close, then certainly I think Ryan's going to be a useful asset for you guys in the, in the run-in between now and the end of the season, especially, you know, as you've alluded to, your injury problems. I think it's also benefit Ryan in terms of getting back involved with the Welsh team. And obviously, they've got big games coming up at the end of end of March, uh, potentially playing Scotland, of course. And um, so maybe he's got one eye on that move going down to England and getting himself a late chance of a call up for that and further down the line uh, as well. If you were to go up, um, I'd have my reservations on whether or not he's a, a Premiership player, maybe a good squad player to have, but. Look, he's obviously got the personal belief in himself. So certainly if the games are on TV, we're, certainly Aberdeen fans are going to be watching with, with interest and, uh, like I said, well wish to see how he, he gets on with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's just going to be one of those, like I say, a useful asset to have with some pace, with some trickery. Um, a different thing that we that we like to have is that pace up front, especially mm. the way that we play on the counter-attack generally. So sounds good. Um I'd be interested to see what the, the rest of the season has in store for Aberdeen. Um, yeah. Six, I think, in the championship at the moment. Obviously, a mm-hmm. little bit disrupted at the moment with the winter break and then the storms that have happened. Mm-hmm. How do you see the rest of your season progressing? Um, I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, I think with the loss of Ryan, um, you know, as I said, personally, I think we're potentially a way to come out this uh, transfer window weaker than we went into it. Um, there's been talk of us signing... Davenport from yourselves on loan um, I don't know can't say I know too much about him but I think he's a centre midfielder if I'm, I'm right in saying yeah. um, we're a bit overloaded in that that sense of position anyway so I don't see him being someone that we should be going after um, I certainly feel we need another uh, we certainly need another replacement for Ryan himself 
um, and another striker be- between now and well Monday and we're recording this on on Sunday afternoon so we're not leaving ourselves much time but there's you know everyone's beating everybody I know maybe some of the, the folks tuning in don't think the quality up up here is much much uh, much use but look we are very passionate about our team we're very passionate about our game and you know if we could get into fourth and get ourselves some European football and maybe go deep in the Scottish Cup that would be seen as success unfortunately our away form probably dictates that we won't go much further in the Scottish Cup we've only got three away wins all season and we're been drawn away in that so I think the focus now is to go and get fourth place in the league and uh, try and rebuild again next season. Absolutely. I'm not one of those who slate Scottish football. I was watching it yesterday, a fantastic game between Ross County and Rangers. And certainly um, we're looking forward to seeing how Ryan does for us and, and good luck for Aberdeen for the rest of the season. And thank you, Glenn, for joining us on the law down here. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. And we'll be keeping a keen eye on Ryan and your promotion push as well. Yeah, hopefully you'll be able to see him as a Premier League player next season and then we'll, then we'll know, won't we? So yeah, <laughs> thank you again. The yeah. Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. <laughs>